Just last week, on September 12th, this incredible portfolio was featured as site of the day on awards. While browsing through it, this page in particular really stood out to me, the work page. It showcased project categories in a really fresh way using these blocks that mimic sort of folder-like interface. And here's the cool part, when you hover over any one of them, the rest of the folders gently fade back, almost like they are inactive, while the hovered folder pops into focus. At the same time, three preview images animate upward from inside it, giving you a quick glimpse of the project visuals. It's a super clean interaction, and honestly, the concept felt too good not to try rebuilding myself. So just a couple days ago, I put together a similar interactive section using nothing but HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and GSAP. It's always surprising how much cool stuff you can build without relying on any heavy frameworks or overcomplicating things. In fact, the entire animation is driven by just two simple JavaScript events, mouse enter and mouse leave, with GSAP handling all the motion. In today's video, I'll walk you through how to recreate this kind of interaction from scratch step by step using plain JavaScript and a bit of GSAP. If you find these kinds of rebuilds helpful, make sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project, plus hundreds of other similar macro projects and a brand new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's jump into the code. Alright, let's start with the HTML. At the very top, I'm adding a simple nav just to give the page a bit of structure. This part is totally optional, but I've added two placeholder lines of text for now. Next, I'm creating a wrapper div with the class name folders to select as the main container that holds all our folder-like blocks and it will span the full screen. All of our content will sit within this section, stacked toward the bottom. Now, if you look back at the original demo, we need a total of 6 folders, so to lay that out cleanly, we are splitting it into 3 rows, with 2 folders per row. To start, I'm adding a div with the class name row, inside that, I'm creating a single folder block which will represent one of the folder cards. Each folder is divided into two main parts. The first part is called folder preview. This is where we'll hold our images. The second part is called folder wrapper and this is where all the text goes. Inside the folder preview, I'll add three images. Each one sits inside its own wrapper with the class folder preview image. Inside folder wrapper, we have got two elements. One is folder index, which is just a paragraph tag that shows the folder number. And the other is the folder name, which uses an h1 tag to display the folder title. That's the full structure for one folder. From there, I just copy and paste the folder once more inside the same row and then repeat that whole row structure two more times to create the second and third rows. Each folder gets different content and images. Now if you look closely, I've also added an extra class to each folder, something like variant 1, 2 and 3. This is just a way for us to assign different background colors to each card, similar to how the original site had different visual treatments for each folder. So, folder 1 and 5 use variant 1, folder 2, 3 and 6 use variant 2, and folder 4 uses variant 3. We'll use those class names later in CSS to apply different colors to each folder. And that's pretty much it for the HTML. The base structure is now in place. Next, we'll move on to the styling and start shaping everything visually with CSS. You can see I've already imported two fonts from Google Fonts. DM Sense for the headings and DM Mono for the smaller label text. These give the layout a clean, modern aesthetic that fits well with the overall minimal feel. Next, I will also set up some root level CSS variables. We have got one for the background, one for the foreground text color, and then three for the different folder variants, yellow, light gray, and a darker gray. I have also added two extra ones for when a folder is disabled, just a softer background and muted text color. After that, I am doing a quick global reset removing default margin and padding, and applying border box to all elements to keep the sizing consistent. Then, I'm styling the body, giving it a soft background color, and applying our foreground text color globally. For the images, I am making sure they always fill their containers and stay cropped to the right aspect ratio, so everything looks balanced regardless of the screen size. Now for the typography, headings use DM Sense with a bold, oversized style, and a tighter line height. Paragraphs are set in DM Mono, uppercased and slightly smaller just to feel more like UI labels. Both have a smooth color transition applied so we can animate those states later on hover. Next, let's style the top now. It's positioned at the top of the page and stretched full width with some spacing around the edges. We are using Flexbox to space out the two lines of text, one on the left and one on the right. 
Now for the main section, the folders container. This is set to take up the full screen height and it aligns the content toward the bottom of the page. We are stacking its children vertically using column flex layout and we are hiding any overflow just to keep the layout clean. Each row inside this container is styled to sit horizontally. We are using flexbox again to line up the folder side by side. Now for the folder itself, this is where the real interaction lives. Each folder is relatively positioned, takes up equal space inside the row and is given a fixed height. I am setting the height to a specific value here because it makes handling the inner layout way easier, especially when scaling across different screen sizes. Inside the second row, I have adjusted the sizing a bit, giving one folder twice the space and the other three times just to break the uniformity and add some visual rhythm to the layout. Now, for the image previews, each folder preview is absolutely positioned and covers the full height of the folder. Inside that, each image wrapper is stacked vertically at the center and sized evenly. We have also positioned each image along the horizontal axis, one toward the left, one in the center and one on the right to create that layered reveal effect when hovering. I am also setting the transform origin for each one. That way, we get smoother, more controlled rotations later when animating with GSAP. Next, we are styling the folder wrapper which holds the text, it's relatively positioned and fills the full folder space and I've added will change transform here to optimize performance for the hover animation coming later. Now we define the folder index, this is the number label that appears inside the tab, it's given a width and some internal padding. Then we add a custom shape on the right side of that index using a pseudo element, this is what creates that side notch, giving it that folder tab like feel. We are setting it to sit just next to the index and shaping it with a clip path. Now technically you could use full height here with left 100% but I found that on some screen sizes it leaves a small visual gap underneath and on the side. So I am intentionally giving it just a bit of extra height and pulling it to a bit more left to make sure it always sits flush with no unwanted white space. After that we style the folder name. This is the heading area. It aligns the text at the top with some side padding. All three, the index, the notch and the name are given smooth background transitions. That way, when we change variants on hover states later, everything fades cleanly. Now we apply color variants. Each folder uses a class like variant 1, 2 and 3. Based on the class, we apply different background colors to the index, the notch and the folder name section. We also define the disabled state. When a folder becomes inactive, its background color softens and its text color fades using the custom variables we defined earlier. This is what lets the hover folder pop while the other fall back visually. Now we move on to positioning the rows. This part's important. Each row is slightly pushed downward using a different bottom offset. The first row is pushed the furthest down, the second a bit less and the third one just a slight. This stacking creates a nice folder like overlap which not only helps the layout feel more organic but also creates just enough breathing room for each folder to slide upward slightly during hover. Finally, let's talk about responsiveness. Inside a media query for smaller screens, I'm scaling down the font size to keep things readable. All rows stack vertically instead of horizontally, making the layout mobile friendly. I'm also hiding the folder previews entirely on smaller screens since they don't really add much when there is limited space. The folder name gets a little more padding on mobile just to keep things balanced. One small detail here, on smaller screens, I am also swapping the background colors on variant 2 and 3 inside the second row. That's just a visual adjustment to keep the colors flowing nicely in the vertical layout. And that's it for the CSS. We have got a clean, responsive layout with all the necessary states and structure in place. And now we are ready to wire up the animation using JavaScript. First, I am importing GSAP which is the animation library we'll be using to handle all the motion. This is what gives us precise control over the transitions both when a folder is hovered and when it resets back. Then I'm grabbing two sets of elements from the DOM. One is a list of all the folder elements. These are the main interactive blocks on the page. And the other is a list of all the folder wrapper elements. These are the inner containers that hold the index and the folder title. We'll be animating these wrappers directly to create that upward nudge on hover. Next, I'm setting a flag called is mobile. We are checking if the current screen width is below a certain breakpoint. In this case, 1000 pixels. This will help us disable hover interactions on smaller screens for the touch devices where those animations aren't really necessary. After that, I'm creating a utility function called set initial positions. Inside this, I'm using GSAP's set method to define the starting Y position for every folder wrapper. So on mobile, we set it to zero, meaning no offset, but on larger screens, we push it down slightly 
slightly just a small vertical shift so that on hover we can animate it back up and make it feel like it rises into focus this offset is part of that polished folder interaction where the hover folder lifts slightly from the stack while the others fade back we'll be calling this function both on load and later on resize to make sure the layout always stays synced with the current screen size next let's set up the hover interaction we are looping through all the folders using for each and for each one we grab all the folder preview image elements inside it these are three image thumbnails that will animate upward when the folder is hovered now we attach a mouse enter event to each folder this means when you hover over a folder this entire block of code will run but before we do anything we check if we are on a mobile screen if we are, we return early and skip the hover effect completely just to keep things clean and avoid unnecessary animations on touch devices. Then we move on to the interaction itself. Inside the event, we loop through all the folders again and for each one that isn't the folder currently being hovered, we apply a disabled class. This is what fades the color out on the other folders, making them fall into background visually and lets the hovered one pop into focus just like in the original concept. Once that's done, we animate the folder wrapper of the hovered folder. We are using gsaps2 method to move the wrapper upward to zero, which brings it to its natural position, essentially undoing the downward offset we applied earlier using set initial positions. The animation is short and springy thanks to the easing function back out. This gives it a soft lift and a nice responsive feel. Next, we animate the preview images inside the hovered folder. We loop through each image and assign a random rotation to it based on its index. The first image gets a random angle between minus 20 and minus 10. The second one is somewhere between minus 10 and 10 and the third one gets a positive tilt between 10 and 20. This creates a natural fan-like spread where each image tilts in a slightly different direction. We also animate the Y position, moving them upward off their base by a set amount so they look like they are sliding out of the folder in real time. Each image is also delayed slightly based on its index so they don't all move at once. This staggered timing makes the animation feel more dynamic and less robotic. Altogether, this gives us that polished hover experience where the folder rises into view and the others fade out and a set of preview images smoothly lift and rotate into place. Now let's handle what happens when you move your mouse away from a folder. Just like before, we are still inside the loop and now we are attaching a mouse leave event to each folder. As always, we start by checking if we are on mobile, if we are. We skip everything here since the hover effect isn't used on smaller screens. Now when the cursor leaves the folder, the first thing we do is reset the state of all the folders. We loop through them and remove the disabled class which brings their original colors and styles back into view. This way, once you stop hovering, the layout returns to normal and nothing stays dimmed. Next, we animate the folder wrapper back down to its original position, the same slight offset we used earlier in set initial positions. This gives that gentle deep effect, almost like the folder is settling back into place. And finally, we reset the preview images. Each one animates back to its starting position, sliding back to zero on the y-axis and resetting its rotation to a clean flat angle. We also add a small delay for each one, just like before, but this time, the delay is slightly longer so the animation feels a bit smoother as it resets. Altogether, this gives us a clean exit animation. The folder drops down, the images fold back into place, and the full layout fades back into its original state, ready for the next interaction. Alright, now let's wrap things up by handling screen resizing and setting the initial state. First, I'm adding an event listener on resize. This means, whenever the browser window is resized, we'll run a small block of logic to update the layout based on the new screen size. Inside that listener, we check the current screen width again, just like we did earlier. We compare it to our mobile breakpoint, and if the value has changed, we update the flag. This is important because we only want to rerun the layout logic when we are actually crossed over that threshold. For example, going from desktop to mobile view or vice versa. If that change is detected, we call our set initial positions function again just to reapply the correct offset for each folder wrapper based on the new screen mode. Then, as a safety measure, we reset all the folders, removing any disabled class that may have been left over from a previous over interaction. And finally, we select all the preview images and reset their animation state as well, bringing them back to their original position and zero rotation. This ensures that everything stays perfectly in sync no matter how the window is resized. And at the very end of the script, we call set initial positions once when the page first loads. This applies that small vertical offset to all the folder wrappers right from the start so that the hover effect works exactly as intended the moment user interacts with it. And that's the full build. A simple but really polished interaction using just HTML, CSS, JavaScript and a bit of GSAP. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.